Hey, praise the Lord. Greetings to you all in Jesus' name. This is Brother Clinton. Welcome to my office once again, and welcome back to the Word Prophet Channel, a Christian ministry dedicated to the purpose of teaching the Word of God to the people in the churches of God so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth as Jesus Christ commanded. Praise the Lord. You know, a young brother wrote me this evening, and he said, Brother Clinton, is it okay for a Christian to have a gym membership? Is it okay for a Christian to have a gym membership? Gym as in gymnasium. Um, and that's a question that I, I thought about answering by email, but I thought it would be better on second thought to make a video to not only answer your question, little brother, but also those of you out there who may have the same question. And little brother, this isn't the first time you've asked about this. We've talked about this before. So perhaps it would be better for me to explain it to you face to face in a video as well. So here we go. Is it okay for a Christian to have a gym membership? Well, you know, the Bible says that bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. And this is to say that bodily exercise isn't something that we should concentrate on or prioritize, but it is something that's needful, just like brushing our teeth or showering or getting dressed. Okay, so, you know, I enjoy exercise. I always have ever since, you know, I was a teenager. My, my natural father kind of got me into, into uh, weightlifting, and I've always enjoyed it since I was a kid. <clears throat> um, but it's not something that I do in a public atmosphere. You know, when I was a kid in, in high school, yeah, we had weight training class, and, you know, I worked out with other uh, teenage boys like I was, and that wasn't a good thing looking back because you know there's there's something there's a phenomenon in the public schools today which is which is wrong it's just straight wrong and that is the practice of causing young people teenagers to take off their clothes in a shower room and see one another's nakedness and having them think that that's normal a locker room a shower room um, that's not normal and that's not good and that shouldn't be happening uh, and that also happens at public gyms too, although not as much as, in, as it was in high school. <clears throat> but that's not really the issue here. And that's not what this brother was asking me about. He was, wasn't asking me about showering in the same room with other people. He was asking me about, is it okay for a Christian to have a gym membership? And here's the answer. The Bible says that all things are lawful unto me, but not all things are expedient. Which means that it's not against the law of God for us to have a gym membership, but it's not necessarily expedient for us to do so either. What does expedient mean? It, it means something that's convenient, something that's good and right. Um, you know, the Bible also doesn't say, thou shalt not drink a glass of wine. But the Bible does say that a drunkard shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So, you know, if a Christian asks the question, is it okay for me to have a glass of wine? Sure. I mean, it's okay. I, I myself used to be an alcoholic, and God delivered me from, from alcohol. So I abhor alcohol, even the smell of it. And I would never want to drink anything fermented, because it just it makes me sick even just to smell it. But, you know, I'm not going to tell you that you can't drink a glass of wine if you want to drink a glass of wine. But at the same time, the Bible says a drunkard shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So that means that we have to have discernment. And for the purpose of having discernment, God has given to us the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind so that we can make decisions like this, so that we can make judgments like this. And if we abide in God's word and abide in prayer, he will give us the answers to things like this. So here's the thing. As I mentioned to you, I also like to, to do physical exercise when I have the opportunity to do so. I can't do it every day like I would like to, but because I don't have the time to do that. But when I have time, I do like to exercise. I have a bicycle. Um, I have some weights that I like to exercise with. Um, and here's the thing. If you were, this is one aspect of the answer. If you were to go to a gym for a year, depending on where you live, it would probably cost you anywhere between two to five hundred dollars for a year. For a five hundred dollars, three, four, five hundred dollars, especially if you're in the United States, you can go on Craigslist and you can find the equipment that you need to do, to do your workout for less money than it will cost you for one year membership at a gym. And then you'll have everything that you need at home. That's what I've done. I mean, that's what I did years ago when I lived in Phoenix as well. I went on Craigslist and I bought the things that I needed. And for, you know, I had a two bedroom apartment. And for less than $500, 
my spare bedroom was a gym. You know, I had an Olympic weight set. I had a dumbbell set. I had, you know, you know, pads for the floor. I had mirrors on the wall. I had, you know, the whole bit. It was a gym. And I, and I built it for, you know, less than $500 by shopping around on, on eBay. And you can do the same thing, especially if you're in the United States. It's easy. Um, and so to waste $500 or up to $500 on a membership at a gym for a year, when the year is over, you have nothing. And then you have to pay again. But if you save that money, just have a little patience and, and wait a few months and save for a few months and, you know, wait until you find a good deal and buy some stuff, then you have it there at home and you can do your workout at home where you should be doing it. And that's the second thing I want to make mention of. Uh, and, and you, brother, when you wrote me your letter, you said you made a point of saying that there are, are women dressed like whores at the gym and that you think you do a pretty good job of not looking at them. And, you know, that's, that's a good thing, and I commend you for that. But at the same time, you know, the Bible says make no provision for the flesh. And if we know that there's a place where women and men are dressing inappropriately in that place, then we really should abstain from going there. Okay, and I'm not saying like, you know, like a Pentecostal pastor, we don't do this and we don't do this and we don't go there and we don't go there. I'm not telling you where you can go um, because the Spirit of God that is in you will tell you where you can go. He's your father, I'm not. Okay, I'm just a teacher. But if, if we know that there's a place where people are going where they're not properly dressed, you know, and they're, most of them are attractive people. That's, you know, because they're at the gym. So, you know, they, they become physically fit. And they're attractive people. And, and uh, the combination of attractive people and not being properly dressed provides uh, for the flesh. And, and the Bible says, make no provision for the flesh. The Bible says, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. You know, a brother asked me, a brother asked me a while back, it was probably three, four, five months ago, about his wife going to the gym. And, you know, we were having a discussion about it via email. And he sent me a picture of his wife um, and how she was dressed at the gym. And she was dressed in clothes that were so tight that she was basically naked with paint on her. It was, you know, she was dressed in leotards, which is underwear. Okay. And I've done a video about this, a video message about this. And I'm very sorry that many people out there don't know that tights are underwear. Okay, or yoga pants, as they're called. They're underwear. They're supposed to be worn under a skirt. All right, they're, they're underwear. They're not supposed to be worn as if they were, you know, just regular clothes because they don't cover your nakedness. And his wife was wearing this leotard, and she was posing, you know, all sexy and everything like a Barbie doll on the stage in a Miss Whatever contest. And she was at the gym in a public place around other men. Now, that's something that a wife would put on in her in the bedroom for her husband for their own personal entertainment that's not something that a husband should ever allow his wife to be wearing outside of the house because the only other people that dress like that besides a wife in in the bedroom with her husband is a prostitute on the street corner or a girl who has no sense and dresses like a prostitute just because you know the the, the entertainment industry has taught her that that's the way to dress outside in public but women who have any self-respect don't go outside dressed like that. And they do that at the gym, and men also at the gym, and that's why they're there. That's why they're there. Because if they had the sense to do what I just described to you a few minutes ago, saving their money and buying some equipment and working out at home, if, they, if working out was really what they were interested in, then they would do that. But that's not what they're interested in. They're, work, they're interested in, in working out in a public atmosphere around other people. Now, some of them aren't there for the specific purpose of it being a meat market. Some of them are, are there because just I, I've known, I've worked out with a lot of men in my youth that just enjoy having a workout partner. They, they like having other people around them. So I'm not speaking evil of that. But for a Christian, when you go there, there are men and women around you that are not properly dressed. Okay, There's also music there that is not desirable to the Spirit of God. Okay, So now you might say, well, I just put my, you know, my... Oh, the phone, so I have Spanish on the brain now. My earplugs, my earphones in, and I can just listen to my own music. Well, I suppose you could do that, but you can do that at home as well. So here's the thing, brother. Here's my, here's my answer to you who wrote, and, and my answer to those of you who might be asking the same question. Is it okay for a Christian to have a gym membership? 
I'm not going to say that it's against God's law for you to do so, but I'm not going to say that it's okay either because it's not okay. It's not okay. The gym is not a place where you should be if you're a Christian unless God sends you there to preach the gospel to somebody. The gym is a meat market. It's a place where people go to show off their bodies and to look at each other's bodies. That's why they're there. So my advice to you, if you're, if you're into physical fitness, if you like physical fitness, there's nothing wrong with that as long as it's not the priority in your life. As long as you understand that the main priority is loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And if God calls you to fast, you're going to fast. If God calls you to do something else, you're going to do something else, even though you might have been planning to work out today. If working out takes over your, your life so that it's your first priority, then that's wrong. Because that's idolatry. Okay, you're idolizing your own flesh. And if you idolize your own flesh, you will be sadly surprised to see that your flesh is not as strong as you think. And God will show you your weakness. He will humble you. But if you keep it in perspective and just do a little bit of physical exercise here and there to keep fit for your own personal enjoyment, that's fine. That's wonderful. Save up some money, buy some equipment, put it in your house, do your own workout there. That way you can listen to whatever music you want to listen to. You can work out however you want to work out. You can make grunt sounds. You can make bear growling sounds, whatever you want. You know, and you don't have to worry about who's looking at you, and you don't have to worry about somebody else walking by you, flaunting their body in front of you, and you having to avert your eyes. Okay? That's just, that, that's my counsel as a Christian and as a teacher. All right. There are some of you who are not into physical fitness very much, so you know that's that's fine too. Although I, I highly recommend that everybody should do some, at least something, you know, walking or or whatever. Just sitting around all day and not doing anything is, is terrible. Especially nowadays, many of us have jobs where we sit down for eight hours a day, sitting in a chair or driving, you know, sitting in a car for eight ten hours a day, like I was when I was driving a taxi back in Phoenix. And so it's it's necessary for us to do some form of exercise. You know, we're we're not. It's not like 200 years ago when we would go out into the you know into the field and work all day, physically, and then come you know sit down at the dinner table and we were ready to eat and crash out. Um, a lot of people have jobs where they don't even really work, like I used to, you know. Um, and so for that reason, it's necessary for some of us to have a physical exercise regimen. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that, as long as it doesn't become an idol. As long as we always remember to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, and with all our strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And when we have everything in perspective, there's certainly nothing wrong with that. Just like there's nothing wrong with eating dinner, or brushing your teeth, or taking a shower, or changing your clothes. There's nothing wrong with doing exercise, as long as it is kept in perspective. And I do not recommend that any Christian brother or sister go to a gym, especially a sister, because you can't dress like a woman in the gym anyway. Uh, so, But I don't recommend that any Christian man go to a public gym gymnasium to work out okay and i'm not saying you can't do it i'm not saying you know like a pentecostal pastor we don't do this we don't do that god will show you if you don't take my advice and you do it anyway god will show you so but it would be better for you to take my advice than to have god show you so this is my counsel to you brother um, to you who wrote and to those of you out there who might have been asking the same question may this be a blessing to you and may god bless those of you who love the lord jesus christ in sincerity he's coming soon for a church without spot or wrinkle. Let's be ready and stay ready. Amen.